Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Shay Dexton going to join us. Hadn't been here for a while because he's been gallivanting around Europe, but he's here now. Shay, how are you? I'm back, and I'm back at work. Shay. Are you glad to be back and at work? Uh, no. Yeah. Well, that was, the, that was the longest trip we had taken, Emily and I, as, uh, as a couple, I guess, since we had been together, beyond our honeymoon, which was probably only four or five nights. I was going to like two-something weeks. But I will not soak and revel in it too much because last summer, whenever I was moving from 24-7 to on three, I was off for three months. So I'm... <laughs> I'm kind of doing less working than ever right now. I shouldn't brag about it. What's uh what's the best city that you went to in Europe? Amsterdam was a lot of fun. I mean, and beyond the reasons why people think Amsterdam would be fun, the architecture was unbelievable. It was clean and good weather. Uh but in with going across Italy, I'll circle Florence. Florence was cool between all the museums and different architecture they had. Uh, they had some nightlife, they had some piano bars. That was a step up from Pat O's for sure. <laughs> so um, hung out there a couple of times. A lot of good food, obviously. Uh, a lot of beautiful scenery. So I'll go Florence. I, I, I spent a, an afternoon in Florence, and a lot of it was in this like market where these guys would try to sell you watches like back behind these tents. It was a little bit of a sketchy operation. I didn't end up purchasing any of the watches, but it did look beautiful out there until we had to get back on the boat. But I'm thrilled that you're back, Shay. Uh, and let's just talk a little bit of, of recruiting. I, I, I try to do this every time we talk recruiting. Like, I feel like I, I had the calendar six, seven, eight, ten years ago. I knew when Boys from the Boot was going to be. I knew when the elite camp was. I knew those were big dates and commitments would, would flow from those. But that was pre-transfer portal and early signing period, and it was a different coaching staff and all that. So it, does the summer still look like that in this recruiting world where it's camps, it's evaluations. You do get a lot of commitments, and you're trying to fill your class up before you get to, to the season, and you finish it up with the early starting period in January. Yeah, like the whole makeup of it, as you just described, uh, has changed. The outcome remains largely the same. It's one of those things where this kind of May through the beginning of a senior season, let's say, which is you know August September. Uh, you're really focused on making new offers, seeing kids in person, getting them onto campus, uh, and obviously landing commitments. And, and all that sort of remained the same. It's just that all the steps to get there have been shuffled up. I mean, we've thrown the transfer portal windows into this. They've expanded uh, the recruiting calendar more than ever. Uh, and now kids are taking official visits as high school juniors, which beyond a few years ago, it never happened um, You know, in the modern era of college football. So because of how much they've opened it up, it's turned into every weekend you've got kids on campus, whether official visitors, which means they're, you know, the school pays for it, or unofficial visitors who they come down on their own dime and hang out and meet with the staff. And during spring ball, and you were out there, every practice there would be recruits there. So it has uh, completely turned in uh, to a 365 operation in terms of recruiting, which Five years ago, there and with no transfer portal, there were many months where just not a lot was going on. All right, offensive line, defensive lineman camp uh, over the weekend. Is that something that Les and, and O did, or is that something that Brian Kelly's brought in, and what were the kind of big fallouts from that? Yeah, they've done an O-line, D-line camp for as long as I've been covering it, and it's pretty commonplace at all the schools. So you'll have skills camps where you know your quarterbacks and receivers and Corners and linebackers, all those guys, running backs are out there, but it's almost like a seven-on-seven -seven setting. So they also build in all these O-line, D-line camps, and they'll have a number of camps this month. Uh, this was just the first one. It was last Friday. And I think the goal for them, because remember, too, because you can take official visits as juniors and rising, those guys are rising seniors, a lot of these kids are making official visits right now. So – they were balancing that, an official visitor weekend, with also uh, hosting a camp on Friday before a lot of those guys arrived. And I think their goal was to get a really good feel for the future. Um, and they made a number of new offers. I know that I think five total offers went out from the O-line, D-line camp. Uh, only one to a kid who's a rising senior. The rest are kind of building uh, towards the future. And 
Uh, also, at the same time, they had a Louisiana offer go out uh, to Jalen Chapman, who is over at Warren Eastman, and he had won a starting job there, which is a pretty good school if you're playing as a true freshman, and uh, even more so as an offensive tackle. So they got him to campus, worked him out, and then Frank Wilson made that offer, and I think we're seeing kind of a continued concerted effort to try to lock down Louisiana, and part of that is getting on a lot of these kids early. I know Jimmy Lindsay, new to the staff on the defensive side, on the defensive line. What did you, uh, what have the early reports been in terms of his uh, recruiting acumen? Yeah, we're seeing him kind of get settled in right now uh, with this 2024 class. I mean, you've got some carryover of guys that you recruited while at South Carolina uh, and now at LSU. But again, at LSU, you're recruiting a lot of Louisiana kids, including Dominic McKinley, who is the number one player in the state over at Acadiana. You're recruiting a lot of Texas kids, Mississippi. So I think that first month for him is really about getting a feel for kind of who he likes, who's into LSU. And then we got to see him, I did, uh, work out all these guys in person at O-line, D-line camp. And um, not the, the Brad, like the Brad Davis approach, you'll hear Brad Davis from wherever you're standing in the indoor facility, you can hear him. Yep. Uh, Jimmy Lindsay is a little bit the opposite, you know, kind of. Uh, quiet, taken, uh, but takes that same approach that Brad Davis does. It's very hands-on, works with every kid. Um, and I found it interesting. When a kid came into camp, uh, and he was probably 6'4", or I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let's say 6'6", six, six, maybe a little bit taller, 240 pounds. You And I thought, I was like, oh, I wonder if there's JUCO kids at this camp, too, because often they'll have JUCO kids at high school camps. Uh, no, he's in ninth grade, so... <laughs> Uh, I asked him his name, and we said, and here it is, and I Googled it, and sure enough, he's already got you know, a handful of SEC offers as a ninth grader in Mississippi, um, and then he got offered by LSU and Jimmy Lindsay, and uh, kind of the funny part why I tell the story is, this kid's blowing up as a national recruit. Well, he told me his very first offer was actually from South Carolina and Jimmy Lindsay, uh-huh. and he said he had just found him randomly, uh, calling around, making high school stops before... Uh, he had really kind of gotten his name out there, and uh, he said that evidently he had called the high school coach and was like, "Hey, you got any guys?" And he's like, "I got an eighth grader, you know, eighth ninth grader here. If you want to take a look." And he watched him and said, "All right, offers in." Uh, and since then, the kid's got a ton of SEC offers now. So it seems he's got an eye for talent. If he's already getting on kids who are, you know, just finishing up a freshman year of high school four states away. Does it still look really good for LSU to to lock in? Eight, nine, ten of the top ten players in the state for this class? I think so. And and certainly when you look at the rankings, whether it's on three or anyone else who's doing rankings, um, like right now, for instance, I'm on three. LSU has five of the top ten committed, and the other five are all considered to be trending to LSU. Um, now there will be different rankings that ultimately flesh out. But I think in the eye of the staff, you know, the ten guys they've really circled, and there's about 12, 13 out there that they've offered and pushed for. I mean, they are on track at this point. Uh, we don't see many guys having already committed. In fact, only one to an out-of-state school. That was Juwan Johnson. He's now flipped that commitment to LSU, and it doesn't. At least at this point, we'll see. Bama's not out there leading for a bunch of guys like they were a couple of years ago in that transition period from Orgeron to Kelly. There's not some guys going under the radar that you know could end up at a TCU or whatever, and then you come in too late in the game. I think they've done a really good job of making offers. Now we're in camp season. More offers go out uh, and really getting ahead of, of what you got to do to lock down the state. So, yes, I, I think that they still have a, a shot. They still got the shot uh, at cleaning up in state and really not losing anybody that they had offered and wanted. You know what the transfer portal has done for me? And I, you follow it a lot more closely than me, but I would think it would have opened just about everybody's eyes too. Is I would have totally lost track of Jark Bernard Converse or of. Greg Brooks, or even of like Osiris Torrance, or any of these any of these guys that weren't huge recruits, they're from the state, they went elsewhere. I wouldn't have paid any attention to them ever. And you realize like how deep this state is with guys that can really play, and they've gone elsewhere, and now a lot of them circle back and come back to LSU. That has opened my eyes to yeah, LSU's trying to get these like top ten guys, but the group from eleven to 40, 60 is still can still play. Oh, absolutely. You see that. I mean, per capita, this is some great tools that On3 has. You can mess around on the website. There's an NFL draft section that then breaks it down. And per capita, Louisiana, and I think it was like a blue chip talent ratio to per capita. And it's either LSU or Mississippi every year for the past decade. And it's typically, or excuse me, Louisiana, and it's typically Louisiana. 
we'll have, you know, what they're averaging 12 kids or so, you know, getting drafted each cycle. I mean, there's tons of kids from all over the state that end up being good. And the thing you have to remember now, Hunt, as a coach, and you just said it, you're recruiting all these guys, even as hard as you are, the guys that are committed, and you know you may not be able to sign them because you know this kid's good enough to where if he goes to TCU and he plays for a couple of years, we're going to be trying to get him back. Yeah. And we don't want to start from nothing, and we're the team that, hey, you never even showed me any love. That's why I went to TCU. It was We recruited you the whole time. In, maybe you didn't get an offer. You are already solid to another school, but we recruited you. And I think that's where we're going to see a lot of teams win in the portal down the road is how good were you at making relationships with guys and not just sort of breezing right through the guys that you didn't think you were going to take at the time. Glad you're back, Shady. We'll talk soon. Thanks, man. I appreciate it, Hunt. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.